the cucumbers are coming in like crazy in my garden. So today I'm going to start my 14-day pickles. They are so good. Now this is a pickle that is kind of crunchy and sweet. So it's a sweet pickle. It's not, it does take vinegar in the recipe, but it's by no means like when you think of bread and butter, which those are kind of sweet, but like dill pickles and some of the others, a sour type pickle. This one's very, very sweet. And I first learned about it only when I met Matt and I married Matt all those years ago. It was a pickle that has been a recipe that's been passed down in his family. A lot of other people make it too though, but in his family for um, several generations at least. And my family, I had never eaten this pickle, never even heard of it. Well, once I met Matt's family and I, I tried the pickle, I really liked it. It's good, like with soup beans and cornbread and uh, fried taters. But it's especially good when you use it in, col in um, potato salad. Probably be good in coleslaw too, but potato salad primarily and tuna salad and chicken salad. Those kind of things where you usually use some type of relish. That sweetness and it has a real crunch to it that just adds a wonderful, wonderful flavor. So the recipe, as I said, it's called 14 Day Pickles. You may have heard of it. And it does take 14 days, but it's a really kind of an easy one because for the, a lot of those 14 days, especially the first seven, you don't do anything. After I do this first step today, I'm gonna let them sit. Now, I'm gonna continue this video with each step that I do and compile them all for you. But I'll also, in the description below, I'll put the link to the recipe so that you can go and actually study it out and see what you need to do on which day so that'll be easier. I'm so blessed to have uh, here, it's kind of, it's laminated so it may be being shiny for you, but it is Dolly Sharp Meese. That was Matt's great-grandmother. This is her recipe, handwritten on a piece of notebook paper. 14 day cucumber pickles, Darly, Dolly Sharp Meese. On the back of it, her son, Curtis, uh, the deer hunter's, uh, Matt's grandfather, Miss Cindy's father, Curtis, he went ahead and because that was kind of, you know, hard to read and he was probably afraid, I guess, that it might, you know, over the years deteriorate where someone couldn't read it, he went ahead and typed it all out and printed it which that's really neat too that he did that. So I kind of have, there's one generation, two generations. Then Miss Cindy, she had these, she made them. That's three generations. And then me and Matt are four generations. So that's really awesome. And when Miss Cindy decided she was gonna give me, gift me with this wonderful uh, piece of our family history, she laminated it for me so to protect both of them and to put them together, which was really nice. So over the years of making them, I've realized that you can kind of deviate a little bit from the original recipe and still have them turn out well. Well, in the beginning, I used a large crock. I still have that. But over the years, those I realized those crocks, because as you get on into the steps, you kind of have to pour this stuff out and put it back and pour it out and put it back. And that kind of gets tough. So I use, I, if you can see these glass containers, I love this size because they're easier to handle, but they're still large. I got these probably, I think at Walmart's where I got them, and they're just glass canisters. Like you might put your flour, your cornmeal, your cookies or something, that'd be a lot of cookies, but something like that in. They're just storage uh, canisters. Now, uh, and so you could use those. You could certainly use a crock. I have a small crock that I use sometimes because before I have halved this recipe. If you don't want to make the full recipe, you could half it, and I've done that. As far as the cu cucumbers, now the original recipe says wash three dozen small cucumbers. Well, if you're like me and you grow your own cucumbers, it's really easy to um, miss them sometimes. So you do have, you know, some small ones. And then all of a sudden you'll find one hiding in the leaves that you didn't see and it's a lot larger. So kind of over the years, what I do is I think of it like that's, a, I think that's a small one. I think that's two small ones. So I kind of like, kind of, uh, I guess, massage or alter that slightly to fit what size of cucumbers I have. So it, the first step is just that you wash the cucumbers. So these have been washed. These were grown in my garden. But uh, so some of these have been in my refrigerator and some of them I just picked this morning so they are still wet. But the first step is you're gonna put them uh, in your container, whether you're using a food grade bucket also could be used. So you're, whether you're using that or a crock or like I'm doing the two canisters. So I'm just gonna kind of divide them up and put them in the, in the um, canisters now. So now that I've got them in the canisters, and you may be thinking, well, you know, there's room uh, to fit all of them in one. 
and you probably could do that but as you begin to to work them up i just find this easier but you should definitely do what works best for you so if you think it's easier and and you don't have much room uh, to put them all in the same canister especially or canister if you're using a canister or crock and i would especially do that when i was using the big crock they were all in all together in one but so now the next part for this first step is we're going to add, I have two cups of regular salt, not iodized, just regular salt. And I'm going to add, since I've divided it, a cup to each. A little bit more. And then I'm going to cover with water. I've got me some water here. This old jar was actually Dolly, so that's kind of neat that I'm using it today. I didn't plan that, but that's kind of kind of neat. Certainly, um, I'm going to just kind of stir it around a little bit to help that salt. Okay, now that I've got them stirred up, and truthfully, I don't even never stir them up usually. I don't know why I did today. Probably because I could see through the glass and see the salt in the bottom. But normally, I just put the salt on top, pour the water on it, and then that's it. That's all I worry about. If you wanted to, you could certainly in a big pot or a big container of some kind or in smaller containers but you could mix the water and the salt together previously if you wanted to i think the original recipe says a gallon of cold water but i don't ever measure i just get enough in there so that they would be covered so now that we've got them in there we're going to weight them down and you can use different you can use a plastic bag filled with water you can use a little plate if you've got any that will so it'll fit in there fit inside that'll kind of hold them down under the water like that you can use they make special weights that you could buy that you could use definitely you could do that so but you just want to hold them down under the water now for the last part of this first step i'm just going to cover the tops usually i would um for like for the crock i would put a towel over it and kind of tie it loosely so that nothing could get in there since this is just the first step what i'm going to do for these get the lids and i'm just going to put the lid on it and just like that leave a little bit of air where it can come in and out i'm going to move these off of my uh, kitchen island here over into the corner and then today is like i said the day this is the first step and then seven days from now i will do the second step and i'll be sure to show you how to do that too So my 14 day pickles have been going for seven days. So today's the day we do the next step. So we're gonna uncover them and I really wanna show you the, cause so many people that ferment, that try to ferment for the first time, this is not really fermenting at all, but they do anything like this where the um, ingredients have to sit in water, they're paranoid about the mold that you see. So I wanna show you the two different ones that I did on the same day and then show you the difference in the mold and then tell you what I think about it. So the first thing is when you take off your lids, you would, I can already smell, it smells like a kind of a yeasty but clean. If it was really bad, if they had like rotted, if it whether this was kraut or these 14 day pickles or pickled beans and corn, you would it would be so putrid that you would, there's just no doubt. But when you look in here, especially in this one, there's like I said, I did these on the same day, uh, like I showed you, and there's a drastic difference. This one has 
just a little bit of mold around the edges, kind of little black specks, more like scum or more like just cloudiness. My, when I moved them over here, my bowl slid down. But this one, you can see there's a real layer of mold. You can see I can just, but once I pull it back, it kind of comes all together at once. I, can, I need something to dip it out with there. You can see the water underneath is fine. And when I smell it, it smells really clean and like I said, kind of yeasty, salted, um, salt smell. These are not going to be fermented pickles. They're going to be vinegar. We're going to cook them, but this is just the first step. But I want you to know that that's totally okay. So you can see how it just kind of all come loose. But even in the water, you can kind of see there's a little bit of kind of cloudiness to it where the cucumbers have been sitting. But now I'm going to drain them. So at this stage, I like to go through and kind of feel of them every once in a while as I put them back into the jar. Because every once in a while, for some reason, one of them will just be mush. It'll just turn to mush. And of course, you just want to discard that one. But these are all feeling, feeling pretty good so far. Those were all fine. Here's the second batch. So see that one there? You can see on the end it's got mushy. So I'm going to set it out. actually got a place on it too. I thought that was some of the mold on it, but so for these two what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that part that part off because the rest of it feels okay. And then I'm gonna keep that. Same thing on this one. I'm going to cut that end off and I'm going to keep this part. This is another one you can see is kind of mushy, so I'm going to do the same for it and keep this part. So now that we've got them drained and we've kind of discarded the parts that were mushy, um, we're going to, today's step is only to add hot water. The recipe actually says boiling water, but over the years what I've decided to do, especially when I was using crocs and I was afraid of, cr of cracking them, I would I bring it to a boil and then turn it off and then let it sit just a minute or so so it's not at that boiling temperature when I put them in there. But I'm just going to start dipping me some water in there, cover them, and still see it's still very hot. Probably pretty good for that one. This time they're only sitting overnight, so I'm not as worried about keeping them all under, but I will will do that. Now I'm going to cover them back up, put them back over on the counter where I've had them sitting, and then tomorrow is really when it kind of starts. You do start doing more of the actual pickle. So um, you've got to think about we've, we're eight days, seven days in. Today's the seventh day from, from when we started, and now we've just got seven more days to complete them. So every, now it's pretty much every day that you have to do something. But again, I will link to the recipe in the description below. It's 
So it's time to take care of my 14 day pickles for today. Today is the day that I will just drain them. I'm gonna put boiling water back over them again. That's what we did yesterday. And I'm also, this time though, gonna to add to the boiling water, I'm gonna add one, uh, it says, this is an old recipe, lump size of walnut alum. I'm gonna use that. So I've just estimated that that's about like a walnut. So that's what I'm gonna use. And then also you need a horseradish root root size of carrot cut in pieces. It's hard for me to find horseradish where I live. I don't know why, but it's hard. I can't usually find it at the grocery store. I've had lots of people tell me over the years that they grow horseradish and that it's like almost invasive. I've tried several times to grow horseradish and never even got it to grow at all. I've, start, I've used the root, you know, I've, I've ordered uh, cuttings of the root and tried that way. It just won't grow for me. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna give up, I need to try that again, but uh, for now, I have to buy horseradish, like I said, and I can't find the root, so what I use is just prepared horseradish, so that's what I'm using. I'm gonna put that in my boiling water. And I've done that for many years, and it works out okay, it works out okay. So now I'm gonna drain both of these and get ready to add the water. So I almost forgot one part, another part that we need to do today is we gotta slice them up. Just as I was draining them, I thought, wait a minute, when I drain them, when I do this, don't I slice them up? So yes, I missed that part, I just forgot. So Corey's gonna help me quickly cut them into slices. Now when you cut them, uh, it's kind of up to you how thick you wanna cut them, but I cut them, uh, what would you say, Corey? What is that, like half an inch? Yeah. About, I cut mine pretty thick. I cut them pretty thick. So, uh, and then whether or not you keep the ends, it's kind of up to you. If you want to discard them, that's okay. And then what size you want to actually make them. But I would go on the thicker side. Uh, so I guess that's what, is that a good, that's yeah. at least a half mm -hmm. an inch, yeah. At least a half an inch. So we're gonna cut them up. And then we're gonna add our boiling water and alum and horseradish. Okay, we got that part finished. Now I'm just gonna kinda half the horseradish. Corey's washing dishes for me. Making a whole lot of noise, ain't Sorry. you, Corey? That's all right. Half the alum. You can mix you could mix this in the boiling water if you wanted to, but I just do it this way. And then I'm gonna start adding my, my hot water. Again, I let my, I bring it to a boil and then I kind of turn it off and just let it sit there. Okay. And we're going to add back our plates. This one only go in a certain way. Did it only go in that other one? Well, that's just bizarre. There. Okay, you got to do it just right. It's like a puzzle. Okay, now I'm going to cover them back, put them back on the counter, and then tomorrow I'll show you the next step. Today's step for the 14 day pickles, we're nearing the end, we're getting closer. We're gonna drain the pickles and today we're actually gonna put the syrup over them that they will be when we put them in the jars. This is kind of, we're leading up to that last step. So I have five quarts of sugar. Sounds like a lot of sugar, I know, and it is. Five quarts of sugar. I have three pints of apple cider vinegar. I have two tablespoons of whole cloves and two tablespoons of celery seed. Then this original recipe, the old recipe, called for a small box of cinnamon. 
can't really buy cinnamon like that anymore. So I use four uh, cinnamon sticks. So I have four cinnamon sticks. So I'm going to drain these, and then I'm going to I'm going to mix all the other ingredients together and bring it to a bowl, and then we will pull it pour it over the pickles and let them sit overnight. takes a, a minute or so to get the sugar all stirred up with the apple cider vinegar and the spices and then we will just need to wait for it to come to a boil. So once it comes to a boil, I will do like I've done uh, kind of with all the other steps. I hate the thought of pouring boiling water or boiling this mixture in that glass container, especially if you're using an old crock. So I will bring it to a boil and then just turn it off and let it set maybe just a minute. I mean, it's still really hot when I pour it over the cucumbers. Okay, I've let it cool just slightly. Now I'm ready to put it in my containers. Since I've divided this recipe, I'm gonna just make sure that like maybe a couple of cinnamon sticks ends up in this pot, I mean in this container and a couple in this one to make sure, uh, maybe I'll do that first. And since this is so much sugar, I will warn you, it is very sticky. This is a kind of a messy part of the um, recipe. It's very sticky. You might also want to make sure just a few cloves end up in, you know, kind of even out the cloves. They're big enough that you can see them. And then after that, it won't matter. But it is super sticky. If that drips, drips on you or drips, it will easily make a huge mess. Now, I'm just gonna kind of make sure they've all covered with the juice before I put my plate back down in to weight them down. Ooh, and I'm splattering it. I think some just went in my hair. Some went over there. It's gonna be very sticky. I'm gonna have to try to get it out. Okay, I'm going to put them back over on the counter, cover them back up, and then tomorrow I'll show you the next step. Time for me to take care of my 14-day pickles for today's step. We've been outside working in the garden, and I'm going to do this real quick before I do some other putting up food. So today's step is really easy, although sticky. That I told you yesterday, really sticky. But we're going to remove the plates. We're going to drain the syrup. We're going to get the syrup out that we put in there yesterday. And you don't need to worry about you don't need to worry about getting every pickle out. It's just what I'm trying not to do. And what I was really going to say though was you don't need to worry about getting every cinnamon stick or every clove out. It's okay if they if they don't all um, if there's still some in there after you drain it. And then we're gonna put those back in there where they belonged. All those little cloves smelling so good between the cinnamon and the cloves it smells really great. Now we're gonna do this one. not to when you're doing this but it's so worth it it's so worth all the stickiness
Now, I'm gonna bring the mixture back to a boil again, turn it off, let it slightly cool, and then pour it back over the pickles. Okay, I've let it cool just slightly, and now I'm ready to pour it back over the pickles. Hopefully I can do it without making a mess. Even I got it. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good too. I'm going to put them back on the counter, cover them up, and then tomorrow I'll show you the next step, which will look exactly like this step. It's time for today's step for the 14-day pickles. So it's exactly like yesterday. I'm going to remove my plates, drain the syrup into a pot, and bring it to a boil. Let it cool slightly, and then pour it back over. Okay, now I'm going to heat it up. Time for us to do our next step with the 14 day pickle. It's just like the one that we did yesterday, but today is the last day, the last day we're going to do it. Well, I should say the last day before we can them. Okay, we're going to bring the mixture to a boil, let it cool slightly, pour it back over just like we did yesterday. Okay, got, them, got the liquid back in. Corey's making her dinner here. <laughs> and now I'm going to set them back on the counter. And finally, our hard work has pretty much paid off. Tomorrow, this is the last step, so tomorrow I'll be able to put them in the jars and I will show you how I do that tomorrow. <sighs> While Corey's being really annoying. <laughs> hey! That wasn't annoying. Uh, that was annoying. I doubt they wanted to see your face like that. Full of food? Yeah. So the day has finally arrived. It's time for us to can our 14 day pickles. So, what I'm going to do is take them out. This time, not just the liquid, I'm going to take the pickles too and put them inside my big pot. I get to wash these sticky containers. Now the original recipe, it actually said to uh, strain it again, pack the cucumbers in the jars, and then pour the brine over them. I, didn't, I probably the first time didn't read it good and did it the way I'm doing it today, and then I just kept doing it like that. But I like to heat it all. I heat the pickles and everything. I just put it all in there, then I put it in the jars. 
Now, there's a controversy in cook in when it comes to canning. Lots of people do things different ways, and then there's the way that you're advised to do it by the USDA, you know, the Canon Authority. Now, they would advise you when you put these in the jars to water bath them for at least 10 minutes. I don't do that. I grew up in a family and I was taught even this recipe by Miss Cindy who did the same, her family did the things that my family did, where it's a type of cooked cannon called open kettle method cannon. So you get the material, whatever you're going to put in the jars hot, whether it was tomatoes or pickles or jelly, and then you get your jars hot, even your lids hot, you, it's all really hot. And then when you pack the food into the jars and seal it, as it cools, it causes a vacuum and it seals the food in there. Now that's what I'm going to do, but you of course have to make your decision of how you want to do it. They are, like I said, it'd be very easy for you to put them in the jars and then water bath them for 10 minutes and that would work just fine. And then of course once they're out, you would need to do the, the same thing you do with any kind of cannon. You need to, after 24 hours, check and make sure that the jars have all sealed. If they've not sealed, put that jar in the refrigerator and eat it first. Enjoy it. The others that have sealed, you can remove your rings if you do that and put them on a shelf for later use. Now this pickle is really good already. When I, I could get one out right now and taste it, I will taste one for you um, after we start putting them in the jars. But I would say any kind of pickle, my advice would be to wait at least a month, if not longer, to really let it, those, um, all the different spices, whether you're using cloves and cinnamon, like I did today, or if you're using mustard seed and celery seed and all that, to really let all those flavors incorporate. I would like, wait at least a month before I started consuming them, just because they would be better. You could certainly can them all and open them tomorrow and eat them all if you wanted to do that. But as far as allowing those flavors to really intensify and to, to really just get perfect, I would like, wait at least a month, if not even longer than that. So now I'm going to drain these into my big pot and we're going to go over to the stove and put them in the jars. Okay, we've got our pickles boiling now and we've got our jars hot so we're going to start putting them in the jars. One thing I forgot to mention, you can see right there there's a cinnamon stick. You will want to remove those and just discard them since they're so large. Now those little cloves, there's one of the little cloves you can see. I just leave those in there. You don't need to worry about them. And you can take the cinnamon sticks out before you actually start boiling them, but I just leave them in there and then pull them out when I find them. And then I just start putting my pickles in the jars. So once I get the jars full, I kind of pack the cucumbers down in there with a spoon. You want it to be pretty tight. Just one or two more, probably is all that fit. And then I fill it with that wonderful juice, wonderful sugary cinnamon goodness. And that's it. If you drop any on top, if because it, it is so sticky, you can wipe that off, and then you're ready to go on to the next jar. So this is what the finished pickle looks like. As they sit in the jars, that 
all that liquid will get really syrupy. So once in a couple of months, when you get some out, that'll be a thick syrup. It's still warm right now. But you can see the, the pickles almost take on a translucent look. And it's all that, you know, putting them, soaking them in the salt, and then even the back and forth of the boiling liquid that we've been putting on them gives them that, that kind of translucent look. And it helps them to stay really crunchy. They're very crunchy. So I'm gonna taste one of them. I may I drip sticky stuff all over me probably, but I don't know if you can hear that or not, but a, a real crunch already. Mm, and so good. This is a really sweet pickle. Kind of has those hints of the cinnamon and the cloves, but a very sweet, of course, as you would imagine with all that sugar. It's so good though to put in potato salad, chicken salad, tuna salad, all those kind of things that you want that little crunch, but you also want the sweetness. It's really good. It's also good though just with beans and taters or sandwiches or anything like that. So the recipe ended up making, let's see, let me count. I counted and I've already forgot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 pints and one quart. And then this little bowl full that was left that I'll just put in the refrigerator and we'll eat those first. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make 14 day pickles. It does take 14 days as you've seen throughout the video. The steps that you do each day are very easy and especially that first one a week you do nothing. So that that one you know that takes seven days off of it right there. But it's such a tasty pickle that I think it's definitely worth worth doing the 14 day regimen there that you're doing. And I also love that it's been passed down in my family. Corey's been helping me make these today, actually can them, and she told me that she wants to make a run of them before the summer's out. She was asking me if there's still time. I said, of course, there's still time. So now that would be another generation of Matt's family, you know, passing down through his family that would be making the 14-day pickles from that recipe. So I just really love that. The tradition of uh, food ways, especially putting up food and handing down those recipes is really part of the Appalachian culture. Uh, so that really speaks to my heart that Corey wants to do that. As always, I hope you'll drop back by often, help me celebrate Appalachia. And if you have any questions about the 14 day pickles, again, I will put the description in the description below. I will put the link to the recipe. But if you have any questions, you can be sure to ask them and I will try my best to answer them.